Controlled Environment Plant Production Engineering Technology Education Modules are developed and presented by The Ohio State University, Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, and the University of Arizona with support from USDA, NEFA, through their Higher Education Challenge Grant Program. This module is presented by Dr. Peter Ling, Wee Fong Lee, and Dr. Margaret McMahon of The Ohio State University, as well as Dr. A.J. Both of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. In this module, we will discuss the topic of growing systems. There are two learning objectives in this module on growing systems. By the end of this module, you'll be able to distinguish between various controlled environments and their functionalities, and compare growing methods based on their locations within the growing systems. What is a growing system? A growing system is a subsystem of the plant production system. A plant production system is a plant's life cycle at different stages as it moves through a plant production facility. The whole process involves seeding, germination, transplant, growing, harvesting, packaging, and shipping. This module will focus on discussing one subsystem of the cycle, which is the growing. There are many things we can discuss in growing systems, such as environmental control options, irrigation systems, plant respacing, plant maintenance, and more. However, this module will only focus on two topics in growing systems. They are growing environments, and growing methods. Growing environments based on functionalities of their structures can be divided into three categories. High tunnel, greenhouse, and plant factory. Growing methods based on their locations can be categorized into the following types. In ground, floor, bench, overhead, and vertical. Why do we want to learn about growing systems? It is because knowing various systems will allow you to choose the system that suits your business type and allows you to grow your plants effectively. Choosing the right system also increases the chance of success in the plant production business. The simplest growing environment we have is a high tunnel. It is also called a hoop house, and sometimes a cold frame. A high tunnel is a low-cost, somewhat leaky, transparent structure that is usually glazed with a single layer of material. It is used to protect plants from severe weather damages, such as frost, wind, and rain, in order to achieve growing season extension. A high tunnel's inside climate, such as temperature and humidity, is passively regulated by incoming solar radiation and natural ventilation through the sides or roof openings. Since a high tunnel does not utilize active climate control systems, the microclimate inside a high tunnel could vary a lot from the center to the edge and swing vastly throughout the day depending on outside weather. If you are willing to invest more money or are in need of better climate control for your plants, a greenhouse might be your choice. On top of weather protection and growing season extension, a greenhouse is normally glazed with double polyethylene or with glass. The structure is less leaky and has better insulation compared to a high tunnel so that an active climate control system can have a better control on the inside climate and have less energy loss to the outside. Two basic active climate control systems are sensor automated heaters and cooling fans, as shown in the picture here. Since active climate control systems are able to maintain climate that is close to the set points, a greenhouse usually has small environmental fluctuations. 
The third option of a growing environment would be a plant factory. As the name illustrates, it is a factory style environment where the plants are grown in fully enclosed and mostly opaque structure. Therefore, it is highly insulated. A plant factory does not rely on natural sunlight. Instead, it only relies on artificial light. It has a fully automated climate control system where all the environmental conditions such as temperature, humidity, CO2, water, nutrients, and light are regulated by instrumentation. A plant factory has the most stable and optimized environment for plant growth. The plants can be stacked without worrying about shadowing the plants below, improving spacing efficiency. With all the positive values, however, the primary drawback of a plant factory is the cost. Due to its highly artificial environment, the operational cost of a plant factory is relatively high. Now, let us dig into the second topic of this module, growing methods. The most traditional way of growing plants is in the ground. In-ground growing gives you the flexibility on spacing out the plants each time you grow them. It does not require any additional structure other than a regular protective cover and therefore does not add any additional load to the existing structure. In-ground does not require the use of commercial growing media. There are several drawbacks to using the in-ground method. There is limited air movement around the plants. There is no vertical airflow to help dissipate heat and humidity accumulated around the plants, which would inhibit the plant's transpiration. Also, the irrigation activity might cause water buildup around the plants and increase the chance of disease infection. You are required to deal with pest appearances, such as weeds, insects, and in-ground pathogens that could conduct soil-borne diseases. Plants are not movable once they are rooted into the ground, and thus rearrangement of the plants to another location is challenging. From a labor perspective, it is difficult for workers to bend at their waist to get to the plants, and also workers have to reach out to the plants rather than the plants being moved to their sides. The second growing method is floor growing. Floor growing is slightly more advantageous than in-ground growing. Floor growing typically grows plants in containers on the floor. Plants are not rooted in the ground, which makes respacing easier than in in-ground growing. There are no additional structures needed other than the possible flooring. Hence, there is no additional burden on the existing structure. As long as the growing media is not recycled, the chances of exposing plants to ground insects, pathogens, and weeds is greatly reduced. Also, floor growing can be combined with potential technologies such as floor heating and flood floors to improve the growing environment quality. Unfortunately, floor growing still inherits the disadvantages of limited air movement, irrigation concerns, plant relocation challenges, and labor posture challenges that are presented with the in-ground growing method. Although plants are not rooted in the ground, workers still have to bend down to reach the plants, and the plants cannot be easily relocated until the workers pick up each one from the floor. With the addition of pots, growing media, and other potential technologies, floor growing becomes more expensive than the in-ground growing method. The third growing method, also the most popular method, is bench growing. The bench growing method can be categorized into stationary and portable benches. Stationary benches could be made from materials such as wood, metal, plastic, and even concrete, while the bench top could be solid, netted, or gapped. Portable benches, based on mobility, can be divided into three groups. Movable benches, rolling benches, and movable tables. The stationary bench method requires you to build some benches in the greenhouse. The benches are stationed on the floor, which does not create structural load to the greenhouse frame. Bench method users most likely would use containers and pot media to grow plants, which reduces pest presence by eliminating recycling of ground soil. 
with a location higher than the ground and potential use of open bottom benches, such as netted or gapped benches, vertical airflow that doubles the air movement efficiency can occur. Furthermore, higher ground helps in draining irrigation water away from the plants and therefore could reduce the risk of disease outbreak caused by water accumulation around the plants. One of the disadvantages of the stationary bench is the challenge of plant relocation. Plants cannot be easily transferred from one place to another without using a transport, such as a cart. Labor accessibility is improved, but still a concern. Plants are at waist height now. Workers do not have to bend at their waists all the way down to the floor. However, workers still have to walk to the plants from row to row. Stationary benches are typically very heavy, long, or huge. Frequent rearrangement is difficult, and therefore the stationary bench method has lost its spacing flexibility. Arranging a greenhouse that is human accessible only, or machine accessible, has to be decided ahead of time. Portable benches have all the advantages that the stationary benches have. There's no structural load, less pest presence, better air movement, and less irrigation concern. On top of those, portable benches make it easier for workers to relocate and access the plants. The benches are now portable, which means you can easily transport the plants along with the benches that they are in and bring the plants towards you instead of having to reach out or walk to the plants. Portable benches, however, still have the difficulty of spacing flexibility since the bench top size is fixed and the number of containers that can be placed in one bench top is fixed as well. Another disadvantage is increased infrastructure needed to move the bench tops around. This infrastructure costs money. Portable benches are categorized into three groups. Movable benches have roller wheels attached underneath the bench, which allows the whole bench to go from one location to another, making plant management a lot easier. Rolling benches are a system that allows a row of bench tops to move from one side to the other using a cranking mechanism. This system opens up a single floating aisle that allows labor access to each row of plants. Growing capacity is increased by eliminating the rest of the walkways. Moving tables have the ability to move from one location to another. Thereby, workers can move the whole bench top to a convenient working area. If moving tables are combined with an automated conveyor system, it will allow you to move the plants to your designated locations effortlessly and save labor transporting the plants. An example would be conveying the plants from seeding place to germination room to transplant room to growing place and to harvesting room. Beyond floor and bench level growing methods, we can grow at the gutter height level. This is the overhead method. The overhead method, such as the hanging basket, is usually used in combination with either floor or bench methods. The main purpose of overhead growing is to increase the growing capacity of an existing growing area. The overhead method does not utilize recycled soil like the in-ground method, so soil pathogens, insects, and weeds are minimized. At gutter height, where the air circulation fans are typically installed, overhead plants will have plenty of air movement around them. Also, overhead plants will not have a water accumulation problem caused by irrigation activities, since the water will drain to the floor. However, one thing to take note of is that overwatering the overhead plants might lead to excess water dripping, creating problems for the plants below. Overhead plants create a shading effect on plants underneath. The shading effect is more obvious in a less light diffusive structure, such as a glass glazed greenhouse. Hanging plants at gutter height and at fixed locations not only makes it hard for workers to reach the plants, but also makes it more difficult to relocate the plants since hanging locations are most likely fixed locations, such as trusses or horizontal bars inside the greenhouse. It is difficult to adjust overhead plants' spacing, except the spacing along the bars. Also, 
the weight of the hanging baskets will create an extra load to the overhead structure and therefore require stronger frames. Vertical growing is a diverse version of the bench method where plants are grown in multiple layers. The major benefit of this method is increased space utilization in an existing growing area. Additional benefits are decreasing presence of pathogens, insects, and weeds in the soil, reduced water buildup possibility, and elimination of additional load on the existing greenhouse frame. However, there is additional load to the greenhouse floor. Vertical growing creates a shading effect due to multiple layers of plants. The air movement around the canopy is not as efficient as the bench method due to increasing densities of plants and structures. Without expensive methods to automate the system, this method might give workers a hard time accessing the plants, especially those on the top and bottom of the stacks. Relocating plants could become very troublesome. Respacing the plants could be a challenge once the supportive structures, such as racks, are built. These structures are likely too heavy to move around or are permanent. Despite all the disadvantages, vertical growing is the most popular method used in the plant factory operation. Plant factories address most of the disadvantages by using intensive lighting and automation, but at an increasing cost. Another growing method that is worth mentioning is the floating raft or deep flow technique. The floating raft is a variety of hydroponics. Hydroponics is a technique that supplies nutrients through liquid solution without earth media. Examples of other popular hydroponic techniques are the nutrient film technique and aeroponics. Floating rafts could grow plants in a nutrient rich pond or a container that fills with a nutrient solution. The plants can be located close to ground level or bench height depending on the pond or container design. The plants are held on floating platforms that are made from lightweight materials such as foam or plastic and are floated on the solution. One of the benefits of the floating raft is a constant root zone temperature. The large water mass can provide even and steady temperature distribution to every plant and could potentially become beneficial to those who practice root zone heating. The roots of the plants are immersed in the water. There is no growing media or irrigation needed. Therefore, there are no water buildup problems or soil related pests. However, the solution has to be mixed well to provide even nutrient supply to all the plants. The floating platforms that plants are kept in are lightweight and therefore the plants can be easily drifted from one side to the other to allow easy plant relocation and towards workers to allow easy labor access. Without attaching anything to the building frame, there will not be any additional load to the existing structure, except for the floor. One of the biggest disadvantages of this method is that if the solution were contaminated with a disease, all of the plants in the same container would be affected. The spacing on a floating platform is pretty much fixed. Respacing is not possible unless the plants are transplanted to a different spacing sized platform. Also, there will be less vertical airflow, and once the plants become dense, the air movement around the plant is further reduced. High wire or lean and lower is an extended version of in ground or floor growing method that extends supporting assemblies to aid plant growth. This method has wires tied on overhead structures such as roof or trusses and attached to the ground. Vining plants are therefore able to grow along the wires. This method is commonly used for tomato, cucumber, pepper, and other fruit crop production in greenhouses. Inexpensive materials and setup make this method an economic addition. At the early growing state, the weight of the plants is not supported by the building frame. However, when the plants start growing along the wires, the plant's weight will become a liability to the building's frame. Another disadvantage of this method is the spacing and flexibility. The supporting wires are fixed at the same locations. It would be troublesome to re-space a huge amount of wires. Since high wire is an extension of in-ground or floor growing method, it also inherits the same disadvantages of 
air movement restriction, water buildup due to irrigation activities, soil related pest presence if you grow in the ground, plant relocation difficulty, and labor access difficulty. This table summarizes and compares all the advantages and the disadvantages among the growing methods you have learned about in this module. Blue color text indicates advantages while red color text indicates disadvantages. Imagining that you are given the task to design a growing system for a plant production operation, this table could be handy for you to do a quick comparison. Remember, there is no one perfect growing system for you to choose. It all depends on your application, the types of plants you want to grow, local limitations, and more. You have to evaluate all of the pros and the cons yourself. This concludes the Growing Systems module. I hope you find this information helpful. Thank you for viewing.